Okay. Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to be talking to you about the evolution of privacy on Ethereum. I have a knee issue, therefore, we are sitting down. I hope you don't mind. Uh, yeah, so uh, my name's Anna. I'm the co-host of a show called Zero Knowledge. Uh, yeah. And I'm Will. You might know me from RhinoFi. And together, we created a company in 2019, uh, 20, yeah, 2019, uh, ZK Validator. So ZKV is an organization that's focused and devoted to supporting privacy and use of zero knowledge proofs in Ethereum and other blockchains. Uh, we run validators, we uh, participate in governance, we build all sorts of tooling, um, and I'm also doing a lot of research and educational material, uh, as well as early stage funding and grants, and also host events, including ZK Paris this Thursday. Um, so we're going to be talking uh, very briefly about the history of privacy uh, in Ethereum space. Um, ZK for privacy and scaling, privacy use cases that already exist now in Ethereum, and then privacy looking forward, and some of the challenges around adoption and then wrapping up. What we won't cover is why privacy, and I think that's something that, many, that, we, that we all know already. Yeah, also a lot of talks, I think, on the topic will help you understand that, if not. Okay, so we're going to do the history of privacy. Uh, we're kind of starting this in 2017. Obviously, privacy had been studied for a long time. Even privacy in blockchain goes back further than this. But since we want to focus on Ethereum, we felt like around 2017, Zcash had launched the ideas that they had put forward could start to be incorporated into the Ethereum kind of idea space. And around then, we started to see some early hackathon projects. The ZK community, to me, really lives you know, in a time frame since 2018. Uh, it was around then when we started the show, Zero Knowledge. It, that's when I started the ZK Summit series. Also, ZCon and the ZK Proofs event series started around then. And in that time, since 2018, you've had groups like PSE, Xerox Park, and ZK Hack, another company that we actually initially initiated, uh, started as well. We believe, and this is like kind of an estimate, I asked around to figure this out, but we think there's over, at least over 50 ZK blockchain focused companies. Uh, and we've also seen large companies like EY, Microsoft, and Meta do ZK experiments in this time frame. But a quick point of clarification, everything I'm talking about there is ZK. Uh, there's ZK snarks, but the zero knowledge part of ZK snarks is really only used for the privacy type tech. There's an other properties of snarks that are used for scaling. And this is sometimes confusing to folks. I just want to mo like note that there's some very, you know, amazing uh, ZK focused or ZK Snark focused projects who contributed a ton to the libraries, also libraries that are used in privacy. But if you think of ZK EVMs and ZK VMs or a lot of the bridging, these are not necessarily. I mean, they're not really privacy. They're using the ZK Snark or Snark for scaling. You also have uh, ZK-based projects that are also focused on scaling, but do have some privacy features, but privacy isn't necessarily their primary focus. But for this talk, we're actually going to be talking about like, specific privacy use cases and sharing with you some of the companies and projects you might be familiar with who work on those. So there are quite a big range of use cases we want to, we want to cover. Um, and we're going to go through some of them pretty fast because there is such a broad use case. Um, but we're going to start off with private transfers. Yeah, so private transfers. This was the first use case that was really established. Zcash was, came on the scene trying to do this. So when we say private transfers, we're thinking like private payments. You want to pay somebody. You don't want anyone to see it. The way they did it is they had a, a transparent kind of environment where you could see transactions and then a shielded pool, a, a private area where you couldn't. And since Zcash, uh, you have seen projects like Aztec V1, ZK Opru on Ethereum, also projects like upcoming projects like Nomada that are still kind of in that spirit of private transfer. Mixes have really been one of the things that's pushed uh, the Ethereum space very much forward in terms of thinking about privacy. Uh, and Tornado Cash really has been the, the major example that we all know. Um, it was funded by Moloch DAO and by the Ethereum community more generally and really sort of highlighted what was possible on Ethereum using zero knowledge proofs. Um, clearly, following sanctioning, this has led to sort of a bit of a chilling effect around mixes. And I think in many ways, mixes were a great example of what was possible, but not necessarily creating um, the type of 
uh, wide-scale usable privacy that we want to do. And so I think it sort of pushed the space forward, but in, to some extent we see other use cases being more interesting going forward. Yeah, almost like there's more, there's more, yeah, it, it sort of led to an explosion of ideas and maybe we have to think about privacy slightly differently. So one, in, one idea here, one use case is the idea of creating an environment for private computation. So this was first proposed in 2021 in the Zexi paper where you would find, you'd actually be able to enable private smart contracts to be deployed. This obviously goes way past private transfers and I think, you know, Aztec, Alio, and Polygon Maiden are, are three teams that are very focused on that. Then we have privacy and ID. And yeah, this, I, I'm very excited about this use case. When you think about privacy and ID though, we've seen like different teams approach it in very different ways. You can think about combining privacy and identity in the following ways. So you could use a real world document like a passport and try to combine that with, like link that to some on-chain on address. You could use on-chain tokens, NFTs, or soulbound tokens. You could use biometric data, which I am not a fan of, but want to put it on the slide. Uh, you could also take a record of activity that you're doing on-chain. I think this is my, one of my favorites because it, it tracks, like, the idea here is that you would actually see what you've done on-chain to define, kind of like, to build your CV, your on-chain CV, and that would then be used as a form of identity. And once you have that, you can do very cool things with this. So you could create some sort of UBI or distribution system. You could allow for group membership or access. You could have certification. So maybe you, you know, earn your degree purely on chain. And I think the use case that's probably used the most right now would be something like KYC AML. There's actually a lot more things that you can do once you have a private on-chain ID. Um, and we're going to mention a few of them later in this presentation. But yeah, there's some great teams already working on this. Private voting is something which uh, has been spoken about much more than it's been implemented so far. But there are great examples already, CLR fund uh, for grants uh, and fundraising, um, and also some DAOs have done examples of private voting. It's a use case that really makes sense if you want to, for example, spend from a treasury um, and don't want to be front run with on-chain trading or other uh, actions that you might take. Um, just recently, um, there was actually, I think Aztec and Aragon collaborated with the Nouns DAO. So for the first time, you're seeing like a, an NFT DAO actually having some sort of privacy incorporated. Games is also uh, a really big area. And I think this is something which we've seen some, some great fun examples. Uh, many will be familiar with Dark Forest, CK Hold'em, or Conquest.eth from Etherplay. Uh, but there's also very big companies now focused on uh, using privacy in gaming um, and, and games generally. So multiplayer games, if you want to get on-chain uh, sort of verifiable fairness, uh, require some level of privacy to prevent uh, people's future turns being revealed before the right the moment. Um, and this is an amazing use case and one which is seeing a, a lot of activity. And yeah, we wanted to talk about private DeFi uh, there's a small caveat here where, like, I don't know that all of this DeFi is ha this private DeFi is happening on Ethereum, but I f we felt like it was important to mention as an important use case in the privacy space. So you have things like private DEXs where certain parts of a DEX, maybe not all of it, but some part, maybe account who owns the accounts or those those things could be made private. You so you also have private DeFi platforms, places where you could have DeFi. So this is where like the uh, private computation comes in again. You could have dark pools, and in the future, in this near future, we hope to see more like intent-centric architecture also potentially made private. And Aztec Connect is really the uh, great, the best example here, uh, where we were able to uh, Aztec were able to achieve on, still keeping on-chain transparent infrastructure, uh, which is one of the things we love about Ethereum DeFi, while keeping the user activity uh, on on Aztec private when people were interacting with things like Uniswap or Lido or other. Uh, DeFi uh, protocols. And the last example we wanted to share here was ZKML. This is a, an odd one to include in the, you know, in privacy on Ethereum, because a lot of these, I mean, these two examples aren't necessarily blockchain related at all, but so much of the research and activity is happening in our space, so we felt like we, we should mention it. So one is to prove the provenance of content without revealing the original document. So say you can take a document, go through a number of editing steps, 
you can prove that it comes from a specific document, but you don't actually have to show that document. It can remain private. Another one would be to use ZK to prove the correctness of private training data in an ML model. And there are a few teams that are working on this in blockchain, in our space, Z Conduit Modulus Labs. And uh, recently, actually, uh, one of our co-founders at ZKV, Kobe and I and Daniel Kang did this attested audio experiment with the podcast audio. It's very loose. It's not like a full, it's sort of like a, a demo at this point, but it's a, I think it's one of the first times we're seeing that attempt to show provenance through content editing using ZKPs, using, and yeah, and keeping everything private. Um, so in terms of where we're going now with future use cases, um, there are sort of extensions of what's already happening and, for example, privacy of real-world assets, linking more uh, activity from off-chain, on-chain, to, to allow it to be used in DeFi and in the Ethereum ecosystem generally. Um, there's also uh, sort of new privacy-preserving privacy preserving tools you can use for uh, proof of solvency, uh, which has become sort of a very big topic and was much talked about following last year's collapses of various companies um, in crypto. And then a really big topic for discussion and uh, research is around privacy for MEV protection and uh, also censorship resistance. So uh, one of the issues we see at the moment is that, of course, um, Validators in Ethereum can censor transactions, and sometimes do, uh, based on OFAC lists or other, other things. Uh, and so one protection against this would be using tool, things like threshold encryption or other privacy-preserving tools for tr transactions so that validators don't see what's being included until it's included in chain. Um, there are other ecosystems where this is also happening and being explored, for example, Osmosis. So I asked on Twitter yesterday for more uh, privacy use cases, and I got a great list. I won't cover all of these, but there were some, like randomness generation was a neat one. I think validating Web2 authentication flows in Web3 is kind of cool, private storage. I mean, I wanted to put this up here. This might just be inspiration for some hackathons. Actually, some of these, there are companies behind these use cases, but uh, yeah, I think there's, there's a lot out there. And I sort of want to mention a little bit about kind of bringing back to the ZK part of things. Um, what can we actually see going forward? Right now in our community, there's an increasing focus on ZK security, you know, these, these systems and these, um, yeah, like kind of research, originally research projects are now, they've been developed, they're, they're coming into the wild, and we want to make sure that they're very, very secure, so that, because we see that they're starting already to get a lot of value uh, entrusted in them. I also think there's going to be other types of advanced cryptography like FHE and MPC really reach the state of being in, you know, in production state to be able to include, to be included with ZK or just kind of, yeah, it will, I think these will enable some really cool other privacy use cases. Uh, specialized hardware, that's already in the works. So this would actually accelerate a lot of the ZK that's out there, make it faster, make it more usable. And then also further optimization of ZK systems that's always ongoing, but I expect that to continue as well. There are still a number of challenges though uh, for our ecosystem in terms of greater privacy adoption. And the, the, the biggest and first one is around legal and sort of regulation um, and concerns, for, especially following um, tornado cash sanctions. Uh, so we're seeing a real chilling effect at the moment. There are fewer teams working on privacy-based applications. There is concern around that. Uh, and it's something which the silver lining has led to more, more research and more uh, working groups around how we can have that happen. Um, there's also uh, sort of still silos. And although we don't, although we do have some privacy applications, uh, they are um, not linked, we don't have privacy by default in a lot of applications, uh, and then onboarding is still a challenge uh, in, many t in many cases. Yeah, so to wrap up, scaling has been the focus of a lot of the uh, Ethereum work, Mindshare, but now is a time to really focus it back on privacy. Um, <clears throat> there's also a lot of technical sort of groundwork that's now been done. We have a lot of the tooling to build privacy-based applications, but the design space is very broad. And I think what we're, what we're looking for now is um, systems which are built, which really take into a, a account the way that the blockchain is being used, the way that DeFi works, um, and which have very purposeful design around how we're using privacy. So not just mixes, but 
uh, all sorts of other applications which maybe have privacy by default. And yeah, there are a lot of directions this can now go. I hope this presentation gave you a sense for how many use cases there are, how many there could be. Um, yeah, that, I just put that question out on Twitter yesterday and I got so many answers. I feel like there's a big open space, there's a lot of opportunity, and I hope you'll, yeah, you'll explore with us. Do we have our last slide? Oh yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Get in touch with us if you're building something like this.